know you got a lot of announcements when in between you're like, I should get water now. <laughs> hey, uh, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the staff pastors here. I, I don't know if I introduced myself at all earlier, but uh, Pastor Jonathan is gone this weekend. Uh, before we actually get into any message at all, because I'm going to get a chance to bring the word this weekend, uh, I want to take a chance to pray for him and uh, Vivi. Uh, they got sick this week, and so if you guys have ever been sick and had kids at home, you know how lovely and wonderful an experience it is to try and be sick and take care of children and hope they don't also get sick with you. So um, I want to do this. They're home. They're, they're recovering. They're getting a chance to just take a weekend off. Um, but can we just take a minute? Can we pray for our pastors? Yeah. Hey, let's do it. Uh, God, thank you so much. Thank you for Pastors Jonathan and Vivi. Thank you for the blessing that they are to us. God, we ask you, first off, would you heal their bodies? For all the kids at home, God, we ask you that, that you would keep them safe. Um, God, that you, if they're, if they're sick as well, God, heal them. If not, God, protect them. Put, your, put a hedge of protection around them to, to keep them safe. And God, we pray that you'd bring them back to us quickly um, and, and as much as they possibly can by have, being in some way some time off. God, I pray that it would be an opportunity to, as they recover, to enjoy that time. Father, we love you and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So over the last couple of weeks, um, Pastor Jonathan has been talking about abundance. And so I'm going to stick in that theme uh, this week as we kind of move towards and prepare for uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, the last couple of weeks, if you remember, he talked a couple of weeks ago about the idea of abundance versus scarcity. Um, this is a great fantastic message because it is so helpful to, to think back and remember um, in our own minds how we can get tricked into thinking that there's just not going to be enough. Um, but we serve a God who's more than enough and is always able to come through. And so we live a life not in our own abundance, but out of the abundance of who God is. And last week he talks about, uh, talked about an abundance of forgiveness, which again is such a fantastic reminder to remember that there is nothing we can do that is more than what God can forgive us of. Um, and so there's an ability to, one, be forgiven, but also that in the lives of the people around us, that we have opportunities to both give that forgiveness as a gift and to receive that forgiveness from others as a gift. And so today, uh, I want to talk to you, because it is fitting uh, in this week, I want to talk to you about an abundance of thanksgiving. You know, we're getting ready to celebrate what's probably one of our biggest holidays, at least in our culture, um, that being Thanksgiving. And I hope that you don't just have an abundant one, right? I, I hope that it's not just that at Thanksgiving you have more than enough, but that in that moment in your heart you have an abundance of Thanksgiving. Because it's one thing to experience the abundance, but it's another to be grateful and thankful and appreciative for it. And so um, I, I want to share with you guys some thoughts that I think the Bible would, would share with us uh, about this. Um, and so today, I want to talk to you about thankfulness. Because I hope that, again, in your heart, there is that welling up of not just a little bit, but that like as you go through this week, you would so abundantly see the overwhelming amount of things that we have to be thankful for. Because even if all year long, like I know for some of us, it can be a cycle, but for some people, it's like, yes, I am thankful. It is the week of Thanksgiving, and I will be thankful again next year at Thanksgiving. <laughs> it just kind of becomes that time that we, we're mindful of it. Um, and so even if it's been a while, being mindful of it, I think, is a good thing. Uh, so thankfulness in and of itself, I think there's really three primary parts that are really important to this. Uh, one, thankfulness is the ability to recognize that a gift has been given. It's also the ability to recognize the one giving it. And then it's followed with some sort of a showing of gratitude for receiving that gift. And I think all three things are necessary. If you're gonna have a heart of thankfulness and thanksgiving, you need to be able to recognize a gift. And we don't always do that. Yeah. Like as simple as that sounds, for many of us, there are a lot of things that have been given to us that are wonderful that we actually don't even recognize and acknowledge that they're actually gifts from God. But I think we need to, one, acknowledge and, and understand a gift that's been given, who gives it, and then share some kind of a, a appreciation and gratitude for that. And so I want to look at a scripture today in Psalms, 
chapter 100, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 136, verse 1. And I want to read this scripture to you, and I want to take some time if we can go through and just kind of break this apart and let God speak to us in, 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 in regards to our thankfulness. So Psalm 136, verse 1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And before we go on there, I, I do want to say something. As I was reading through this chapter this week, it was, a, it was a fun reminder of some of the ways that the scripture is written, that there's this responsiveness to this particular psalm. There's these statements that go over and over to share something, and it's always followed with, his love endures forever. And I would encourage you, in every opportunity that you have that you recognize something to be thankful for, recognize that in that it is his good love for us that has given us that gift. Uh, and so I want to break this apart a little bit and, and just give you guys some things that I think would be helpful to remember this upcoming week. So first off, he says, give thanks. In giving thanks, this is our ability to show gratitude with either our words or our actions. So here's something I would like you to think about when it comes to the words that we, we use, the words that we speak. What are those words that I'm letting come out of my mouth? Is, is, are the words that come out of my mouth full of thankfulness? Are the words that come out of my mouth full of gratitude? Are the, the words that come out of my mouth um, a continual recognition of the good gifts that are in my life? Or am I using my words to complain, to gripe, to perpetually take notice of all the things that I don't have, that if I thought that I did have them, then I might be more thankful? What am I choosing to use my words for and with? Because the thing is, is, is sometimes I think we can forget that we're the ones who choose our own words. Yeah. I choose what goes from a thought to a word that's spoken. Now, sure, there are plenty of times that we all have moments that we speak too quick. Maybe it's out of anger, maybe it's out of excitement, and we're like, I didn't mean to say that. The thing is, you didn't want to say it. <laughs> Sometimes I say things I don't want to say, but if it came out of my mouth, I chose to say it even if I didn't think long enough to say, I should not say that right now. I'm the one who chooses those words. I'm the one who gives permission for those words to be spoken. I mean, think about that. In, in this upcoming week, as we're mindful of thankfulness, what am I choosing, what am I giving permission to come out of my mouth? Because again, and if, if you've got kids at all, you, you know that you can have those moments where they just have those they just knock it out of the park, right? They, they say, thank you. Like, that was great. Really appreciate that. We've had plenty of times, I don't, like, this is just sharing my own life. There's been plenty of times we sit down to eat dinner, and, and my wife, Elise, has worked so hard to make dinner, and we're there, and, um, and the first thing that my kids will look at are the things on their plate that they want to eat, and the things they're like, I don't even want that. And we've had, like, for me, there's had to be times like, listen, <laughs> Before you say the things you don't want to eat, can we say thank you to mom? Thank you, mom. I don't want that. <laughs> and it's developing not just words of thankfulness, but a heart of thankfulness. Uh, we are the ones who give permission. That we are the ones who choose our words. We allow them. Words that come out of our mouths are allowed by us to be spoken. And so what are we allowing? What are we giving place for? What are we giving permission for? when we use our words. And if we're going to speak words of thankfulness, here's the really tricky part. If we're gonna do it and it's actually going to be meaningful and right and correct, it actually has to come from a heart of thankfulness before the words come out. Because yeah. listen, there's it's just like talking about with my kids. There's plenty of times I'm like, shut up, shut up. I, stop it, I see you. Say thank you to mom first. Thank you, mom. Right, and at times, they mean it, and at times, they're being obedient to say the words I've asked them to say. <laughs> Thankfulness is more than just using the right words. Thankfulness is a heart issue. And before we can really be thankful with our words, we're gonna have to have a heart of thankfulness. Um, in, in Luke chapter six, verse 45, it says this. It says, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. 
And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. That one will preach right there. All those moments if you said something wonderful and you'd be like, yes, there are the many good things in my heart. And then there's things you said like, well, I would be ashamed if anybody heard me say that thing that that has welled up in our hearts. See, what's in our hearts is what comes out of our mouth. And so if we're going to develop thankfulness in our words, be able to share that with others, we're gonna have to first develop a heart of thankfulness. And I have a couple of things that I wanna share that I think are just some good tips that'll help us develop that heart. So number one is this. I think we can develop a heart of thankfulness by choosing what it is that I'm looking for. See, an an attitude of thankfulness can be developed by continually and perpetually over and over looking for things to be thankful for. If we're not looking for it, oftentimes we won't find it because we find what we're looking for, right? Like, because we find what we're looking for, if I'll learn to look for things to be thankful for, here's the thing, I'll find them And because I find them, I'll also start to find more because you find what you're looking for. Like, let me give you a couple of examples um, that I could share with you because this kind of goes both ways. Um, One, I I can choose to forget about things by choosing to ignore them. If I ignore something long enough, I will forget it exists, right? But I can also choose to remember things by giving them more attention. If I give something more of my attention over and over, I will choose, I'm I'm actively choosing to remember that thing. See, here's the thing. I have a hard time really remembering where to find Taco Bells. I don't go there because I don't like stomach aches. I just don't. Now, when I was younger, I went there because uh, back then I thought it was food. And so, sorry, I'm not just talking. Yeah, you know, at, at 20 years old, I was like, this tastes great. And at 40, I'm like, I'll pay for this very soon. And it doesn't taste like I remember it did, right? And so because I've chosen to just bypass them for so long and ignore them for so long, if you're like, let's go to Taco, Taco Bell, I'm like, where? Like, which one? The same thing happened a long time ago. I don't even know if these still exist anymore. The old Taco Mayo's. Listen, I have had once or twice, even in my, like when I was younger, I, was, I had some Taco Mayo and I was like, I'm paying for it and I'm 20. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what it even do to me now. Like, but I don't know where they are because I chose to ignore them for so long, I don't even recognize it. And the same can be true with our thankfulness. If we just choose to bypass opportunities to be thankful, eventually we won't even see opportunities to be thankful for anymore. But the same is true in reverse. So here's the thing, um, I'm talking about what choosing, you know, to these things and, and you find what you're looking for. So recently I got a chance to buy a truck. Been wanting to get a truck again for a long time. Been saving up money, prepping for this day, wanted to buy a truck. When I got to the place where I finally could, I knew exactly what I wanted. I researched it. Had my wife help me. She's a fantastic researcher. Uh, like we've talked about these things, like what's a good choice? And so for me, what I had landed with is I was looking for a Toyota Tundra I want to be a crew max. I want a double cab. I want as big as that thing could be because I have children and they're only getting bigger. <laughs> I want lots of space. I want it to be four wheel drive. I want, to be as, I want it to be as old and low miles as I possibly can because I don't want to spend a lot, but I don't want it to have a lot of miles. That's what I wanted. So every time I saw one, I'd be like, that's beautiful, love it. It's too new, too expensive. Ooh, love that, it's old enough. Geez, where were they driving every day? That thing has 350,000 miles on it. I don't want that, right? And then I'd see some be like, it's beautiful. It's two-wheel drive. I'm like, I don't want it. I knew what I was looking for because I had a, a thought process in mind of what I wanted this to be for my family. I wanted to adventure in this trip. I want to take my kids places. I want to go wherever I want to go, and I want it to last forever. Once I made that decision, do you know what I started seeing everywhere? Crew Max four-wheel drive Tundras everywhere. Like, that was all I could see. And here's the weird part. Do you know what my kids see everywhere? Because apparently I was talking about it, looking for it everywhere. (laughs) Crew Max four-wheel drive Tundras. 
Now, I'll also share another nice and, and uh, you know, fun story. Um, you know, they would see big trucks, and they're like, that's a big truck, Daddy. You know, tell us, is that one, which one has more four-wheel drive? Which one's got more power? The thing was, is they saw Pastor Charlie's truck, which is giant and has huge amount of... <laughs> so every time they ask me, do you know what they ask me when it comes to, like, what has the most power? Like, it's always Pastor Charlie's truck. They don't ask me about mine. I mean, they ask me a little bit, but they're like, so um, if that truck, we know it has more power than yours, but does it have more than his? <laughs> no, son. Does it have more than yours, Daddy? Yes, son. But I don't care. Mine's going to last forever, right? So um, <laughs> my kids have learned what to look for because they watched me. The way I look for things intentionally doesn't just affect me, but my kids, if I can look for things to be thankful for, my kids watching me will look for things to be thankful for, not because I told them to, because they watch me. And if I perpetually ignore opportunities to be thankful, my kids' observation, because I'm discipling them by letting them watch and live and walk with me, they will also learn to ignore opportunities to be thankful for. I think another way we can develop thankfulness in our hearts is by learning to be content. I think that contentment and thankfulness go hand in hand. I think they go hand in hand because in the nicest way I could possibly say this, I think that contentment lowers the bar for things that I can be thankful for. I want a lower bar. A lower bar is not a bad sign here, right? If I can be content with anything, then I can be thankful for everything, right? Um, there's this scripture in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. I, I want to read it to you. It says, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. This is Paul talking. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. See, if we can learn how to be content with anything, not just content with more, not even just content with where you are now, but if down the road you have less than what you do now, can you still be content? Learning to, like, learning to be okay and content with less gives you an opportunity to be thankful for more. Uh, my wife and I have had some interesting opportunities throughout our years to travel We've had a chance to live overseas a couple of times for different varying amounts of times. And there are just certain things when you live in other places that then you come back home and you're like, I don't know why I was never thankful for this. And it can seem like really silly. Like then once being back here, you start to like be thankful for things and you seem silly to other people. But it's like, listen, if you have lived without it, then all of a sudden when you have it, you're like, I am never going to be discontented <laughs> or unthankful for this again. Um, my wife and I, we... One of the things that she has done as she's been homeschooling our kids, um, when you get into November, we've done this for a couple of years now, is up on the wall, she uh, puts this big sheet of paper and she draws this beautiful thankful tree, this nice big tree that's empty with no leaves. And then she prints off these little leaves and every day at the table, sometime during breakfast or lunch or dinner or whenever, we'll stop for a minute, we'll ask the kids what they're thankful for that day. Like, what's something you're thankful for? And we write it down on the leaf and we put it up on the wall. And throughout the month, we get a chance to not just think of something we're thankful for that day, but we get a chance to look back over the month and see all these different things we're thankful for. It's really fun, really cool. And, you know, there are things up on there, they're like good, deep stuff. Stuff that you're like, if you come in, you're like, oh yeah, thankful for Jesus. Definitely better be on the wall. <laughs> thankful for salvation, thankful for mercy, thankful for grace. And then there's things up there that are like, they're not big, just thankful for him. I'm thankful for hot water. I'm putting it on the tree. If you've ever showered in cold water because you didn't have hot, listen, for the entire five months that we were in Africa on a missionary trip, we didn't get to shower in hot water. We came back and we were like, I don't think I've been clean for five months. I don't think cold water cleans you. I think it just kind of rinses off. You smell a little better with the soap. And that's it. Like I got back and I was just like, I'm going to sit here forever. I'm thankful for air conditioning, heating, shoes, Tylenol. 
Hey, you laugh. You ever had a headache, tried to drink some water, and it still didn't go away? Some Tylenol goes a long way. A little Pepto-Bismol, right? Some clean water. These are simple things that we bypass all the time that we forget to be thankful. I mean, for the last two years, it's not up there yet, but I promise, I've been waiting because I've been forcing myself to have deeper things to be thankful for. Every year on the thankful tree, bacon cheese fries makes it up there. (laughs) Because here's the deal. The Lord created the potato that gets used. (laughs) He created the pig I make that we get that bacon from. (laughs) The cheese, like, listen, it's an opportunity to eat and dip it in the ranch. I don't even know how you make ranch or where it comes from. Because I don't need to. I just get it with my bacon cheese fries when I pick them up and I'm thankful for it because the Lord gave it to us. And it's silly, but I'm appreciative for it. If we can just learn to be content with the little bit, we can be thankful for so much. And in doing so, then we get a chance to really actively give thanks all the time. The next part of that scripture there. It says, give thanks, but then it says, to the Lord. This is acknowledging not just a gift that's given, but acknowledging the gift giver. It's choosing the directions of your words. Our words can be spoken. We choose them. We allow them. But what is the direction of it? And oftentimes with our thankfulness, we need to make sure that we're acknowledging the person who's giving the gift. Now, yes, of course, we can always thank God for everything. But in your own life, whether it's a spouse, a kid, a brother, a sister, a friend, who is, what is someone that, that they have given you something, done something for you that you are thankful for? Getting, I mean, even if it's just a quick thank you, sharing the appreciation, however you share it. We don't all share it the same way. However you share your thankfulness, share it with that person so that they know that you see and acknowledge not just the gift, but the one giving the gift. And I think it is important that we always remember that it is God ultimately who gives us every good gift. James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. We've got to remember that it's God who's blessed us with all the good things that we have to enjoy. Let's not forget that. Even as we thank God for a person, or even as we thank a person who's given us something, let's ultimately be thankful that God has put that person in our life to begin with. That God is responsible for all of the good and great, wonderful things that we get a chance to experience. Because the other side of this is the forgetting of thankfulness towards God for those good gifts. I saw this scripture this week that just like it caught me. I was, I was sharing it with my wife and we were sitting um, in the morning reading together and um, I, I just, I had seen this from a different perspective before and I'd always thought of it in a certain way, but then when I was just reading scriptures about thankfulness, all of a sudden it just, it popped up and it, it caught me. And it's Romans chapter one, verse 21. It says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. I saw the scripture and so I was reading some like commentary on it because I wanted to just like chew on it a little bit more. And I loved the, the thought that was written when I was looking up the commentary. And he says this, he says, their love for God did not keep pace with their knowledge of God. Their love for God didn't keep pace with their knowledge of God. In other words, their knowing about God did not lead to a love and thankfulness for God. You know, we talk about all the time about we are a church that exists to help people know Jesus and show Jesus. Let's not just be a people who knows him. We wanna be a people that also shows him. Because the more we know who he is, the more we live a life that loves and is thankful for him and that comes out in the way we share him with other people. Then the next part, it says, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. So now we've acknowledged, we've we've got thankfulness, we're acknowledging the gift giver, but here he's acknowledging the gift, that God is the gift giver and he's also the gift for he is good. 
Here's what I wanna encourage you with today, church, in this, in, in this regards. Regardless of whether or not life is good right now, he is good. Regardless of whether or not circumstances are good right now, he is good. You are going to walk through moments that are both good, bad, and somewhere in the middle. And what hasn't changed in good, bad, or somewhere in the middle is the fact that he is good. And he loves you. And he's watching over you. And he's taking care of you. And he's close to you. And he sees you. And he hears you. And he responds to you because he is good. Hold on to that. Be tight with that. You're, some of us are going to sit down for Thanksgiving this week with abundance. And some are going to sit down with less than abundance. And some of us are going to sit down with family members who all get along. And some of us are going to sit down with family members who none of them get along. <laughs> and in that moment, we might be just, uh, um, tempted to look at all the things that we think are either good or bad and forget that we can simply just be thankful that at the end of the day, God is good and I have him. I have him. And then it says this, his love endures forever. This is the response to the thankfulness here. Again, this is acknowledging part of the gift. He is good and his love endures forever forever and I want to piggyback right off what we said just a second ago that regardless of whether life is good or not he is good and I have him and whatever I am experiencing right now won't last forever but his love will if you're in the most fantastic place of your life right now it won't last forever if you're in a terrible spot right now it won't last forever. But his love for you will. And it will never, ever change. And so I pray that this Thanksgiving, you will have an abundance of Thanksgiving in your heart that comes out with your words. That you can recognize the gifts, you can recognize the one who gave you those gifts, and you can share and show that gratitude, thankfulness, and appreciation with the people or with God himself who gave you that gift. And so as we close today, I would want to offer you this. If you're here and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you've not been forgiven of your sins by God and invited into the family of God, it is the greatest gift that we could offer you as an opportunity to be thankful for. There are so many people in this room that I know you've made the decision to let God forgive you of your sins, to be born, what the Bible would call born again, that our spirit would be born again into the family of God. And that is the greatest gift of all. It is an opportunity that if you're here and you have that in your life, let that be the starting place of all of the things that we're thankful for. That if I had nothing else, just being forgiven by God and a part of his family is more than enough to be thankful for the rest of our lives. But if you're here, and we pray here in just a moment, I would invite you to give your heart to God, to simply where you sit, ask him, God, would you forgive me of all my sins? And would you make me a part of your family? And I promise you where you sit, that as your faith wells up in your heart to believe and you confess with your mouth that right there in your heart of hearts, God will change you. So let's pray today together, church, as we bow our heads and we close our eyes. God, thank you so much for your goodness, for all of us who share in this experience and this opportunity to belong to your family and experience your forgiveness. We're thankful so much, God. And I pray for each person right where they sit, that if they have never done that before, that right where they're at, that they would just ask you, God, will you forgive me? And I thank you that, that you will, because it's who you are and it's what you do. So Father, we love you. 
And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, church, don't forget, if you haven't got one already, to grab one of these that we talked about so you can be mindful of the particular schedules. Be looking over the next couple of weeks for all the tags going up and the teddy bears and the gifts and things to be a part of. But above all, let's just share some thankfulness with each other as we experience those good things. Amen? All right, you guys are dismissed. Have a wonderful Sunday.